welcome to today's session. Myself, Dr. Annapurna, it gives me a great pleasure to extend to you a very warm welcome on behalf of College of Pharmacy, Mother Teresa Postgraduate and Research Institute of Health Sciences, who has clapped all of us for the Global Pharma e-learning webcast series, International Webinar 2, on the topic, Nature-Inspired Sugar-Based Multifunctional Drug Delivery Carriers, and the research person is Dr. Murali Kumar Swami, Senior Research Technician, Israel Institute of Technology, Israel. Before we get started, I take this opportunity to thank all the delegates who had attended our first webinar on July 10 on the topic The Fact War by Dr. Muhammad Rafilla from Team Saudi University and made the event a grand success. Thank you again. Now, I request Professor Dr. V. Gopal, Principal and Head, Academic Registrar, Department of Pharmacognosy, College of Pharmacy, to welcome the participants and the resource person. Thank you very much. Pranams and happy afternoon. I, on behalf of our dean and the entire family of Mother Teresa Postgraduate and Research Institute, of Health Sciences, a government of Kuchir institution, extend a warm welcome to the resource person of today's international webinar to Dr. Murali Kumaraswamy. Thank you very much, sir, for your august presence, and we welcome you, sir, for this international webinar. We express our gratitude for having uh, shared your valuable time and going to share your valuable experience uh, for the benefit of our students. Your presence has made this Unlock 2.0 in India very fruitful. We are looking forward for a very uh, fruitful learning experience. We once again thank you very much, sir. I take this opportunity to welcome all the active participants. The last webinar uh, was a mega success because of the active participants. I once again thank the participants for your uh, enthusiasm. I thank you for your involvement. I thank you for your feedback and I thank you for your august presence. I welcome you again. I take this pleasure in welcoming all the faculty of the College of Pharmacy and the faculty of Mother Teresa Postgraduate and Research Institute of Health Sciences for their active involvement. At this juncture, uh, it gives me happiness to thank uh, the technical team consisting of Dr. Selva Kumari, Dr. Anna Purna, Dr. Norul Adam, Mr. Sudhir, and Mr. Dinesh. Thank you very much for your hard work. I thank uh, the entire uh, team behind this uh, webinar. I welcome all the participants, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Science is not learning of facts but training the mind to think. Now, I request Dr. E. Selokmari, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharma <coughs> Pharmacy, to introduce the speaker. Good morning, one and all. I take this opportunity to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Murali Kumarasamy, currently working as Senior Researcher, Sydney on Israel Institute of Technology, Israel. Coming to his academic path, Sir completed his B4 in the year 2005 and m form in the year 2008 from the Tamil Nadu Dr. M. Chan Medical University, Chennai. In the year 2008, he joined as lecturer in CL Biomethod College of Pharmacy, Chennai. Coming to his international path in his professional career, in 2010, he received a research grant that allowed him to work with the research group of nanobiotechnology and bioanalysis group, University of Rovida, Virgili, Tarragona, Spain, as a research fellow and conducted a study in the optimization of separation and isolation of circulating cell free cycle DNA for non-invasive prenatal diagnosis. This work led him to move Laboratory of Cellular and Developmental Neurobiology, Institute of Experimental Medicine, Hungarian Academy of Sciences, where he has joined the far larger multidisciplinary European Commission SP7 Marie Curie Consortium of Nanotools and has interdisciplinary doctoral thesis investigated on the interaction of nanoparticles with neural stem and tissue type cells. As a Marie Curie early stage researcher, he visited and made short time research across, across globe at Norway, Germany, Spain, Ireland and Belgium. In 2015, he obtained 
doctorate in theoretical medicine from doctoral school of samalwais university budapest hungary since completing his phd he spent at the magneto optical spectroscopy laboratory budapest university of technology and economics working on the magneto optical diagnosis of malaria he then moved back to india and then at the center of nano biotechnology not sorry nanotechnology indian institute of technology root k as a junior faculty post doctoral fellow in january 2017 he joined in technion israel institute of technology funded by the national network of excellence in neuroscience ran from the israel's largest teva pharmaceuticals and planning and budgeting committee fellowship from the israel council for higher education he holds several prestigious fellowships including mary curie and national institute of health working in multidisciplinary aspects and he has joined and gained valuable experience in testing biological responses to nanoparticles and nanomaterials he is an author of over 30 publications and an inventor of patents in the year 2020 dr murali received european union interact grant to explore his trans galactic approaches on diagnosis and the treatment of pediatric brain tumor in november 2019 he moved to the international iberian nanotechnology laboratory located in portugal to establish his senior researcher position The underpinning focus of Dr. Murali's present research is creating personalized solutions that utilize nanoscale technologies to enable a range of therapeutics for neurodegenerative diseases and brain cancer. His interests are highly disciplinary, involving collaboration with local and international colleagues. At present, he combines his globe-trotting scientific adventures and transgalactic ideas to initiate the path in high reward entrepreneurship. With this very brief introduction, I would like to hand over the mic to Dr. Anupurna Mal. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Before we get started, just a few instructions. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type it in the chat box. We'll bring them up after the presentation. The feedback link will be attached in the YouTube chat box towards the end of session. Now, I request the speaker, Dr. Murli Kumar Swami sir, to take on the session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Can you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's audible, oh. but okay, uh, the screen is not still coming, sir. So. Screen is. So this, sir, uh, you plus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stop presenting. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. I hope now it will be okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, all the participants. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me thank um, uh, Dr. Selva Kumari, ma'am, for uh, for her kind invitation. Um, also, Dr. Anupurma, ma'am. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, just moments. But sometimes internet is choppy. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay. Yeah. Can you able to see? Because sometimes the internet is choppy, you know. It's, it's, that's why I, I. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, thank you, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I I like to thank uh, Dr. Salu Kumari Ma'am for uh, for her kind invitation. Um, also, I, I thank uh, Dr. Anupurna Ma'am for uh, for uh, for her introduction. Um, also, I, I thank Principal Sir, Dr. Gopal Sir, for uh, for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for his invitation. Um, so I'm I'm really so privileged to give a talk uh, at, at the, the Mother Teresa Institute of uh, Higher Education um, and Sciences College of Pharmacy. 
um so it's, it's one of the prestigious institute at the same time a lot of experienced faculties are working in this institute as far as i know and um, so i i i am so privileged uh, to give a talk in this i mean to give a virtual talk in this institute and today what i'm going to do is today i'm going to talk about nature inspired uh, sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carriers um um so uh, the, the the main um inspiration is you know Take it like a natural materials and use as a multifunction, like different for the different applications, uh, drug delivery carriers. And this is a snapshot of my presentation. First, I'm going to talk about um, from nature to nurture, like how nature is useful, and also the what are the problems actually, because why we are using natural materials and what is the pharmaceutical problem, real problems, or how pharmaceutical research and development is is challenges. Uh, and also uh, nano approaches like nanotechnology, how nanotechnology to solve the problems of drugs, actually the real pharmaceutical drugs. And, and next I'm going to talk about the glucose transport resistance cancer, because I'm, I'm, as I mentioned, like a multifunctional. So my, my talk about uh, some parts about cancer and some parts about neurological disorders, actually. So I'm also going to talk about neurological disorders and biological barriers and sugar nanocarriers. Uh, how sugar carriers is fueling the drug delivery to the brain. So this, these are the snapshot of the presentation. So as I mentioned, nature is, you know, nature is useful in, uh, for the human being in so many ways, actually. Uh, that's why we used to say like a nature is God. Uh, so for example, if you see the first picture, like it's Jekko feet, um, uh, it's, it's a, this uh, nanotopography of Jekko feet is inspired uh, uh, scientists to create a tissue adhesives actually, because existing, existing tissue adhesives are, um, it, it produce a kind of, you know, inflammations and it's not like very good additions actually. But this Jekko feet has it's inspired the researchers to make a very good tissue adhesives. And in, in micro diagrams, for example, as you can see in this, uh, the blue uh, tube states actually, this, this tube is nothing but it's obtained from the, the plant crystals actually, the calcium oxalate crystals. And they, they, they manufactured like a next generation, um, um, like drug delivery um, uh, robots, uh, for example, robots, micro robots. Also, it's a single cell surgery and drug release uh, using the plant-based, uh, like a biogenic materials. So these are like a next generation drug delivery materials. And uh, you know, there is a small animal. Uh, it's like a more humble animal. It's a percopin actually. So it's, it's inspired uh, researchers to make a surgical stop actually. For example, sutures, uh, when you're making a sutures, the needles are like, you know, you need to give a lot of pressures actually. But what researchers, they, uh, they take inspiration from this animal and they, they made like a, uh, less pressure uh, sutures materials, like suture inject, uh, injectable materials. And also you can consider like a lotus leaf actually, that's another um, inspiration for the researchers. Um, uh, based on this lotus leaf uh, researchers, particularly on nanotechnology based, they created um, a hydrophobic uh, paints, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's a kind of self-cleaning materials. And even the car glass, actually, they, they made it like a hydrophobic so that, you know, you do not need a wipers to, to, to clean it. And also silk fi fibrine, um, it's, it's a biogenic origin, actually. It's used in, um, this particular proteins is used in uh, um, multiple applications like a drug delivery and also tissue engineering applications. So nature is helpful in so many ways, actually. Not only this, you know, there are biogenic excipients. For example, gelatin is a hydrolyzed fam collagen also obtained from the nature actually also elastin is a kind of protein actually it's in, it's in many applications like tissue engineering and kind of application uh, 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 of course is a green tea yes epigallocatechins um, uh, also uh, useful in so many ways um, um, it's antioxidant and etc etc a lot of applications actually I, I i mentioned very few because i if, if i want to mention you know it's like a, it's a, like another chapter i need to i need to discuss and also lecithin actually using uh, using oleogel drug delivery and all and more famous chitos and you know it's also biogenic origin actually it's useful in in uh, these all materials they are using in a drug delivery vaccine delivery antibacterial agent and more importantly like a tissue engineering like a regenerative medicine that's a booming area of research actually so um, not only in drug delivery we also can apply in tissue engineering the, all the natural materials so wide applications and um, I, I, I have to mention this because um, um, I, I know natural materials has got some kind of attention actually, but since 2015, uh, it got like more attention because uh, because of Professor Yu Yu Chu and Professor Satoshi Omura and Professor William Campbell, they, they received the Nobel Prize um, for the discovery of biogenic antiparasitic drugs actually. They, uh, they discovered uh, the drugs from the different origins like from bacteria, from the natural origin, like a plants, you know, automation, you know, like anti-malarial, 
uh, and also soil bacteria they utilize as antimicrobial properties and ivermec ivermectin so actually the ivermectin it's, it's like a is anti parasitic drugs is useful in human and also veterinary a lot of veterinary applications even uh, as you know recently it got attention for the, for the covid 19 treatment also so uh, from since from 2015 so so it it got like much attention particularly the natural origins uh, materials and biogenic materials and in our research um, uh, we we utilize a, like a galactomannan as a targeting block to treat um, like to target the cancer as well as uh, neurological diseases actually what is galactomannan galactomannan is like a kind of gum it's a locust bean gum it's a natural biopolymer extracted from the seeds of karok tree as you can see here um it's um, uh, the, the main advantage is like you know is a biodegradable low to toxicity and low cost actually that's a very important for, for example when you because uh, india like countries like developing countries even the de developed countries uh they they are uh, they are looking for the low cost materials actually so this is the low cost is so uh, this is uh, like a very important uh, parameters and also this materials are like galactam and used in food cosmetic and pharmaceutical industries in in in, in, in a different different categories applications and um, this is structure of the the uh, the the, the galactam and you can you can see like a, one side is a man and another side is a galacto so that's why it's called as galactam and i i should talk about the the major challenges in pharmaceutical r and d um you know the biopharmaceutical classification as pharmacist you, you you must know biopharmaceutical classification system like class 1 2 3 and 4 the sad truth uh, is a class 2 and 4 the most of the drugs particularly the 50% of approved drugs and 70% of novel drugs it falls on this particular two category which means that it uh, these drugs are poor somehow has a poor acute solubility and permeability of drugs actually so in a, for example if you want to treat many diseases like it should cross the biological barriers so you know human being has uh, as a human body has a lot of barriers so biological barriers so it should cross so in order to cross you know the drug should have like a good permeability good solubility so where the nanotechnology platforms plays a very important role to overcome this this uh, uh, issues like major issues Mm, how the ma micro nanotechnology to overcome biopharmaceutical drawbacks so, as you know we are a pharmacist and we know the challenges in drug delivery like you know the off target accumulation for example cancer i can say like a cancer is a big example um the existing drugs conventional drugs um, is not like a target specific or cell specific and also drug resistance um it, i think um uh, it's, it's a next i'm sure the next pandemic is going to start from the drug resistance so as a sci scientific community i'm insisting um um to uh, to uh, work on this drug resistance multi drug resistance and back um, antibacterial resistance that's very important actually to to overcome the challenges and also poor bioavailability it's a, it's a one of the existing ones and a bio, and physiochemical instability actually because in body as you know different um, ionic strength and different ph different biomolecules proteins and dnas and extra etc so drug molecules most of the drug molecules is not stable in in inside the body for example Uh, you know there are different categories of nanocarriers actually for example you can ca you can categorize um, on a surface chemistry basis like um, the positive and a negative and also there are composition space like uh, there's different materials silica polymeric materials actually that that's the main main focus of our, our current talk and our research actually there are a lot of natural materials uh, um, we can we can isolate the polymers from a lot of natural materials and liposomes is a most successful story from from nanotechnology and viruses like non virulent viruses or iron oxide and dentimers you know there are many 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 uh, the particle composition used as a drug delivery vehicle and also the different geometries actually for example triangles rods cubes and spheres actually used as a drug delivery vehicles in many cases and targeting ligands particularly this this got much, much attention uh, they are using a different antibodies proteins are peptides and nucleic acids small molecules polymers for for the targeting drug, drug delivery so these are the drug delivery different types of drug delivery but but problem is you know systemic toxicity but nanotoxicity is a big big issue actually that's the reason uh, most of the researchers we are, we, we are using a polymeric materials particularly the polymers from the natural origin actually that, that's 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 what i am emphasizing at this at this presentation also the polymeric nanoparticles so why polymeric nanoparticles for the drug delivery you know polymeric nanoparticles are as a sub micron size is 1 to 100 nanometers and is a colloidal particle and you can able to encapsulate any sort of drug drug molecules like a small molecules or even the macro molecules actually within the polymer matrix that's a big advantage of polymers so that um there are specific advantages of uh, nano nanoparticles at the drug case for example the simple production process 
uh, and also, also scale up like the mass production is much more easy in in polymeric nanoparticles and physical stability actually i, I mentioned you know as, uh, as most of the conversion drugs has, has uh, physical instability but when you are using a polymeric nanoparticle when you are encapsulating drug materials with the polymers uh, it, it improves the stability in, in biological fluids and uh, and also improve the stability of encapsulated drugs against enzymatic degradation and possibility of sustained drug release and higher intracellular uptake compared to microparticles so these are the advantage of nanoparticles actually and also another case when in nano it's a, it's a surface a nano has a more active surface actually so you can modify it with any sort of materials like a targeting agents uh, uh, using an antibody as you can see in the picture ligand peptides cationic molecules so that site specific like a target specific is, is much more easier and self assembly amphiphilic co um, block copolymers co um, and most of the you know we utilize like a natural and synthetic materials to prepare the amphiphilic block copolymers so actually why is amphiph amphiphilic because you know amphiphilic it contains like a soluble materials like hydrophilic and hydrophobic cores actually you can able to uh, it's a self assembly in nature in an in, in aqueous environment you can you can able to um, create like a different geometries like a cylindrical and also in this and the spherical um, the the main important thing is the hydrophobic core it's it's hide from the the aqueous uh, aqueous environment so that you can um, when when you want to encapsulate the drug the, the drug can um, go and bind with the hydrophobic core and so that you can prevent the drug uh, um, uh, like you know you, uh, you can improve the sustained release actually by this way and uh, as you know like the so famous is uh, the critical mesal concentration at the, at the which concentration is um, the mesal is formation is, is critical mesal concentration so uh, this way we are we are manufacturing we are creating the, the polymeric uh, nanoparticles as i mentioned you know you need a this is a chemical pathway we utilized for uh, for uh, manufacturing our our polymeric uh, nanoparticles particular nature natural uh, origin polymeric nanoparticles that we utilized galactomannan as i mentioned in the, in the previous slide here the galactomannan act as a hydrophilic part and also for the hydrophobic part we use a methyl methacrylate like polymethyl methacrylate um, so we, we combine this uh, in, in, in a self assembly it's not like you need you do not need to like to perform like a reactions and this is a mechanism i don't want to discuss it i'm not like a, you know familiar in this this mechanism and all um, so we we, we utilized uh, the synthetic and natural actually so why is this uh, synthetic because here the methyl methacrylate it got like a usf pre approved and it's non toxic and compatible and minimal uh, um, inflammatory reactions and low cost actually so the, uh, as i mentioned galactomannan also low cost so we combine this both and we we created the galactomannan nanoparticles and uh, here this nanoparticles not only in solubility water solubility nanoparticles also plays important role in passive and active targeting actually and particularly in active targeting you know uh, the passive is something different because it's um, uh, but in active targeting recently a lot of research is going on in particular in active targeting for example you know we are, we are, as i mentioned nanoparticles is like is um, uh, nanoparticle surfaces are like more active right so in this case nanoparticles can be functionalized with any sort of ligands as i mentioned before which can interact with any receptor so that the, the target based uh, um, so, uh, like uh, uh, like focus is much more possible with with the active targeting and uh, so far i discussed with you know nano approaches like pharmaceutical problems and what are the nature things and right now i'm going to talk about like glucose transport is in cancer as i mentioned in our glucose transport is in cancer and glucose transport is in neurology diseases so first i'm going to focus on glucose transport is in cancer so can you know many tumors and many tumors display high rates of sugar uptake so um so sugar is like you know essential for our physiological nature actually so sugar is performed through sugar transporter proteins you know there are a lot of transporter proteins I, i'm not going to discuss about the, the transporter proteins here because that's a big chapter uh, if you want to discuss about the influx proteins uh, there are a number of glucose transporter proteins located in plasma membrane as you can see in the picture when um, when 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 sugar, you know sugar as i mentioned it, many tumors display like higher uptake of sugars actually so when you uh, the the main hypothesis like when you use the sugar based uh, materials you can you can easily accumulate on on this on the on the tumor site so that you can you can deliver the drugs at the particular site actually this is the this is the main hypothesis of our research and uh, um, so and and another case uh, you know there are two different uh, families of transporters actually in, in particular in, in glucose transport one is like a sodium glucose trans linked transport which is called as sglt there are a lot of subtypes are there but i'm not going to discuss the, all the subtypes um, which is called as like active transporters 
uh, why is active because uh, sodium ions we, we, which needs like a kind of energy like ATP production so in this case that's why it's, it's like active transporters and facilitated diffusion glucose transporters is a passive transporters actually and uh, you know there are as I mentioned like there are different subcategories of glucose transporters like glucose transport one two three and transporting high affinity of glucose um, etc and um, most of our in vitro experiments um, we focus on patient derived um, soft tissue sarcomas particularly um, uh, the sarcomas you know mostly it, 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 um, it created in I mean it's found in a lymphoid vessels blood vessels and muscles actually particular neuromuscular regions and tonsil ligaments particular nerve regions and the main important things we focus on rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma and ebbing sarcoma cells actually rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma cells uh, it, it mostly it occurs in, in children actually but very few uh, adults also uh, they, 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 got, they got affected and also it, it also having sarcoma is like a, it also is, is, is the second uh, largest class of disease after osteogenic sarcoma and uh, so that that's the reason we focus actually mostly our research focused on cells over expressive glucose transporters you know the reason is because we use the galactam and like most more sugar based um, um, materials uh, nanomaterials as a preliminary study what we did actually we choose um, four different cell types um, uh, as i discussed like a rhabdomyosarcoma cells and having sarcoma cells, uh, two different cells, uh, and Kakut is like a colon carcinoma because why we used it, it these cells, the particular cells will not express any glucose transporters actually. So uh, we utilize as a, as a control. So as you can see in the picture, the viability pictures, so most of the cells, our, uh, we, we, I mean, we expose our galactoman particles um, uh, in, in the concentration of 0.1%. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's a more viable actually it's not harmful to the to the any of the cells we tested and further we what we did actually we we, uh, we our experiments we performed with the, with the um, confocal microscopy um uh, with, with the lower magnification uh, in this case what we did like we we conjugated the nanoparticles with the pitsy which, which is like a green color which is one of the, the staining agent uh, in order to track the nanoparticles and the dappy is like a, uh, we strained the um, uh, nucleus of the cells with the blue color and phyllidin is like a, a acting filaments we strain with the, with the red color option, as you can see. And we expose this nanoparticles, the galactam and the nanoparticles into, into this um, rhabdomyosarcoma cells. Uh, as you can see in, in the lower magnification, as you can see, some particles are, are, uh, are bound with, 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 on, on the surface of cells, actually. Still, we don't know whether it's particles are inside the cells or outside the cells. So further, we investigate with the higher magnification. As you can see, the higher magnification, it clearly shows that particles are really inside and um, it accumulated inside the cells, uh, the glucose uh, exp or, or, or expressing the cells. Uh, further, we investigated with the confocal microscopy like the Z-stack images um, because we sometimes, you know, we don't know whether particles are just on the surface or just on the inside, actually. So we, what we did, we did a Z-stack with the with, um, with, um, with, um, ortho images, as you can see. Uh, particles are really inside in, the, in this video is clearly shows that particles are you know it's spreaded even even in the, in the interior places of the cells actually so um, and it's, it's, it's a four hour exposure um, and also we repeated the same experiments with with one hour um, with the same kind of nanoparticles same kind of treatment well in this case what happens like we, we found the nanoparticles are, are inside the cells actually um, also we we, we uh, performed with a four degree centigrade because then um, um, you know, as I mentioned, like active and passive. So in order to identify whether particles are like this, this is active uptake or passive uptake, we, we also analyze with the, with the four degree, like lowest temperatures. Even at the lowest temperature, you can see that some particles are inside the cells. And um, we we repeated the same kind of experiments with the uh, Ewing sarcoma cells for the four hours experiment. And uh, as, you, as you can see in the picture, it's not like uh, comparable with the previous cell types, but uh, some uh, some particles are, are internalized, but some particles are like accumulated outside the cells, and, uh, as you can see in, 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 in the, and also in the other pictures you can see. Uh, some some cells are like uh, some particles are really inside, but uh, some some particles are like outside. But these aggregates, uh, particularly uh, only the dying cells, is uh, taken up the cells. Uh, I mean, taken up the particles. So. Um, I also, we, we performed again with the, with the, with the lower temperatures uh, in order to identify the passive or active cellular uptakes. Again, the same uh, results we, we, we applied. The most of the um, uh, particles are outside the cells, it has got accumulated, aggregated actually. 
uh, in, in the in, as you can see in even the higher magnifications and um, you know so far i discussed about the two different cell types and um, uh, two different temperatures we using a confocal microscopy but now we uh, we used a flow cytometry why we used a flow cytometry because um, a confocal is like a qualitative information in order to get the quantitative information because quantitative information is much more needed actually so uh, we uh, we prepared the same samples, uh, same polymeric nanoparticles, and we exposed into the two different cell types, like avian sarcoma cells and rhabdomyosarcoma, patient-derived cells. And as you can see in the table, uh, here we also performed with the two different temperatures, like a four degree and thirty-seven degree, um, as we did for a, for a confocal microscopy. And the avian sarcoma cells in the four degree centigrade, four degree lower, lower temperatures, is a lesser uh, lesser uptake. You can see only fifteen percent uptake. Um, you can you can able to see. But in case of four hours, uh, at, the, at the higher temperature, 37 minutes, like a physiological temperature, you can able to see like um, um, almost 98% of cells, it got accumulated, like almost 100% of cells got accumulated, the, the nanoparticles. After 20, even after 24 hours at the same temperature, like 37 degrees centigrade, uh, almost all, um, like uh, all the particles, like 100% of the particles got uh, um, uh, accumulated this nanoparticles, like a sugar-based uh, nanoparticles. Uh, we also repeated the same test, uh, same experiments with the rhabdomyosarcoma cells, um, which express the glucose transporters. And same results we, we obtained um, in, in a lower temperatures, like a 36%, only less than 50% of the cells um, got accumulated. But in, in, in a higher temperature, like physiological temperature, we can able to see um, a really higher uptake um, uh, of, of this uh, glucose uh, nanoparticles actually. So this is the first, um, so afterwards we performed um, uh, in vivo studies and also I don't want to confuse you actually producing, I mean, presenting the in vivo thing. Um, so we also published this paper. So, um, what, what we obtained, like we, we used a pediatric solid tumor using uh, in vivo studies and this particular um, um, uh, particles, it accumulates uh, the, the, the tumor expressing the glucose transport as one actually. So also so the summary is the next summary is like, you know, development of pre-functionalized nanoparticles. So we didn't functionalize any specific way. As I mentioned, uh, our ultimate aim is not functionalizing, but without functionalizing to target the, the specific organs actually. So pre-functionalized nanoparticles and engineering them to self-assemble into a targeted nanoparticles. And uh, we got like uniform cell size of 150 nanometer size and low size distribution actually, because nano is a big problem actually, size distribution. Now, when you are producing a nanoparticles, you get like a, a polydisposity. But in our case, we got like a, exactly like 150 to 160 nanometer size. And another uh, achievements what we had like successful uptake of particles by cells overexpressing the sugar sugar receptors, and also we got a very good in vivo results, which I'm, which I'm not going to present at the moment. And I, I'm presenting the next part of my my presentation, like neurological disorders and biological barriers. Um, you know. Uh, Brian also uh, um, plays a very important role. I mean, the, this glucose metabolism plays a very important role in physiology of the brain. So we, we uh, I'm, I'm going to present the second, next segment of the presentation. And you know the disorders of the nervous system actually. So I'm, I'm, I'm starting from the, some basics. Um, so disorders of nervous system, there are more than 600 neurological disorders actually. The vascular disorders, stroke, ischemic stroke, hemorrhage, um, uh, it's because of hypertension and a lot of cardiovascular uh, disease actually. India is leading at this um, uh, this kind of uh, problem. So um, due to the food habits and, and environmental factors and structural disorders like brain or spinal cord injury or, or uh, tumors like brain tumors. Uh, brain tumors not only in, in adult actually, the pediatric like kids tumors actually. That's really devastating tumors. Um, also functional disorders like a migraine, epilepsy, dizziness, you know, these are neurodegenerative disorders. But I think most people are, we are working on Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's and multiple sclerosis. And these are like motor neuron diseases like amyloid sclerosis, Huntington's actually. The main problem is, you know, in order to treat the diseases, um, the drug, your drug molecules should cross the, the brain's own security system is called the brain barrier. The, the sad truth is like mostly 98% of the drug compounds almost um, 100% uh, of the macromolecules, like a large molecule, is not crossing the blood-brain barrier. And that, that's that's still the neuroscientists we are working on towards how to how to overcome this this issue. Actually, as I mentioned, the blood-brain barrier, uh, which which passes some essential molecules, but at the same time it blocks some harm, ha harmful materials. Actually, this blood-brain barrier is composed of uh, 
five different cell types actually, but mainly three cell types are much, much necessary at, at, um, uh, for, for, for making a, a tight regulations. One is like endothelial cells and astrocytes and pericytes. Actually, these three cells of cell types is much more important along with the, the microglia that I'm going to discuss some part with the microglia also neurons actually it's a biological wires. These, these are all like um, uh, it's a, uh, forms like a neurovascular unit. Actually. This five cell type plays a very important role um, to, to regulate the permeability of the, any, any materials and also in, in disease mechanisms actually. And uh, as you know, it, it this uh, this blood brain barrier is regulated permeability with many many unknown details actually for example uh, glucose is crossing the blood brain barrier but same like glucose like molecules is not crossing the blood brain barrier that's a that's still uh, is mystery behind this actually neuroscientists and pharmaceutical scientists are still we are working towards uh, to overcome this these problems and to to uh, to un, um, to explore this uh, this particular issue and uh, still we don't know like what sort of particles or drugs to be investigated uh, to, to, um, to cross the blood brain barrier. And based on this fact, actually, as I mentioned, you know, uh, the particular molecule system is crossing and uh, like in order to maintain the permeability, like a lot of glucose, ions and gaseous molecules is crossing the blood brain barrier actually, based on different mechanisms actually. Uh, the first mechanism is like you know a diffusion based mechanism so it's mostly the small molecules are involved less than 500 kilodalton molecules hydrophobic molecules involved in that and also paracellular transport and it's, it's, it's happening between these tight junctions um, cell junctions of the proteins and transport proteins um, uh, is, is another another way of mechanism actually um, this uh, receptor mediator transporters this is very important in nano based research because many research is going on in particular uh, Particular area of research, particularly you know, uh, as I mentioned, uh, nanoparticles are like high, it has like the high surface um, uh, active surface function share. You can able to functionalize the nanoparticle with the different different um, targeting molecules. So uh, many researchers they are they are um, functionalized with different receptors, different proteins. Actually, they are targeting based on the receptors. So, you know, brain has like different different um, receptors like transferring and lipid receptors and etc. So, and also adsorptive transitors, so like it's, it's adsorption uh, on, the, on the cellular membrane. Um, so this, this, also, there's the efflux transporters actually. There are, you know, I, I'm talking about glucose. Glucose transporters are like influx transporters actually. There are a lot of efflux transporters in, 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 in the brain and different parts in our body. That, that's called, shortly called as ABC transporters, which is the main reason for this uh, uh, drug resistance and all. Uh, so, these are the mechanisms actually of, of, um, of the, the blood side to brain side. Um, and uh, how this sugar nanocarry is fueling the drug delivery to the brine actually as i mentioned you know uh, brine is like the physiological um, the, the meca most of glucose metabolism is a, the, the essential for the brine physiology um because uh, for example you know uh, the, the the brine is like a really tiny organ so it covers only two percent of our body but it consumes like a more than 20 percent of glucose actually um, what, what, what our whole body consumes. Uh, so that, that, that's the, so the brain is like a, a main consumer of glucose actually because brain need like a huge uh, um, CNS tissues need like a huge amount of glucose um, uh, consumptions to, 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 to make the physiological actions. And uh, today I'm, I'm, I'm also I'm, I'm discussing like a different cell, CNS drug delivery approach actually. Um, this is a, you know the previous conventional approaches like inversi approaches um, um, there are different approaches like intracerebral implants and transient BB reception and interventricular actually intracerebral just open up the skull and you are keeping actually you, you do not need like a, uh, any surface functionation but you know uh, you, uh, these these methods somehow it need like a specialist person like a neurosurgeon actually. Uh, that's why the reason the non-invasive methods is it's it's, um, it's like a booming at the at the moment to, to deliver the drug into the into the brain there are different methods actually one is like a chemical methods biological methods pro drugs and drug conjugates but our approach is to collide the drug nanocarriers which is like in particular the non-invasive we are focusing on international actually direct transport of by international route to the brain via olfactory and trigeminal nervous system as you can see it, it's the shortest route um, why I'm discussing today because um, you know there's a novel infect like coronavirus also spreading to nose to brine actually because some 14 percent of people are affected by by this this um, this um, this route of uh, infection so uh, that's that that's why I, I'm also talking about this particular route actually and uh, 
in in uh, in, uh, in application wise this this particular route like nose to brine is like a shortest route as i mentioned and also it's a non invasive method we can easily target like um, uh, brine um, um, and also it avoids hepatic first pass metabolism because it, it do not need to cross many barriers and circumvent the blood brine barrier um, so these are the, the main main important things actually the more efficient nanoparticles in the range um, is 100 to 300 nanometers um, also uh, in our case, we use the glucose transporters. I, I discussed you know, why we, we use like um, glucose-based nanoparticles. Um, so that also, you know, this international is like emerge as a, a new um, approach to to circumvent the the the, the blood-brain barrier, which is like a brain's own security system, and to deliver the drug into the central nervous system. And um, you know, the first slide I mentioned about the the, the Nobel Prize uh, for the for the nature materials, um, natural materials. And yeah, I'm mentioning the the Nobel Prize in 2004 was awarded to uh, to unravel the the function, the mechanism of olfactory system. Actually, it was awarded to Professor Richard Axel and Professor Linda Bach. Um, previously, we, we uh, it, it was a big mystery behind this olfactory system. Actually, because how brain represents the external world is not only the central theme, but it's uh, art of physiology, psychology, and neuroscience. Uh, olfaction is important beyond telling us how we smell. Uh, same like vision, um, olfaction is much, much more important actually. How does our sensory system work and how it interacts with the outside world actually? Because, you know, brain, as I mentioned, like brain is like a more, most compact um, organ. It uh, doesn't have any, any connection with the outside world actually. The only connection uh, through nose. So they, they, they explored a lot of information and they produced like a very good information. So they, they got Nobel Prize in 2004 for this for the, uh, very wonderful discovery actually. And also the olfactory, the nose to brine, like uh, I mentioned like a distant voice is like just nose to brine actually, but it, it's not like an easy system. It's a most, most complicated, like tightly packed system, olfactory region, almost no extracellular uh, space. Why? Because it, it contains like a huge number of cells, like a mitral cells, granule cells, um, like a cribriform plate and olfactory receptor neurons. You know, neurons is like a, it's a jungle actually because there are trillions and billions of connections inside our body, inside our, the olfactory systems. Um, so uh, it's like a tightly complicated system and most delicate connections actually. And another unique features of uh, olfactory neuroepithelium has extraordinary unique characteristics of undergoing continuous turnover. Like, you know, these neurons are not stable actually. All the time, it, it uh, regeneration happens in the, in the particular regions actually. And the olfactory, li uh, the neurons lifespan is like four to eight weeks actually. So in order to target at this route, and you, need to, you need to consider all these factors actually. But one advantage is, you know, most of the neurons is expressing the glucose transport. And actually that, that's why I'm, I'm discussing all these stories. Uh, so in our research, um, what we did actually, uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, none of the works, the previous works, uh, they isolated the olfactory receptor neurons that they performed the experiments actually. So in order to target the nose to brine, um, so what we did, we isolated the cells from the olfactory regions and also the cortical regions because um, uh, many previous research, what they did, they, you know, they 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 performed uh, experiment directly to the animals actually. But in order to know the mechanism, exact mechanism, uh, you, uh, you need to perform the in vitro experiments, or like in vitro or x wave experiments. So in our case, we isolated uh, ex um, the olfactory receptor neurons and cortical, primary cortical neurons, and uh, we exposed uh, the polymeric nanoparticles. Uh, same like you know, as I mentioned, like FITSI labeled the polymeric nanoparticles, like the galactam and nanoparticles. As you can see here, um, uh, the, some of the, the neurons are stained with the tubulin, actually, the red color, but these particles were accumulated in um, uh, beta tubulin immune ne negative uh, cells. Um, it's not um, accumulated on the, the particular on the neurons, actually. Yeah, uh, same same uh, results we obtained with the olfactory receptor neurons. Uh, neurons did not take up the particles. Instead of neurons, um, um, some other cell types, like uh, some some third elements, is uh, taken up the particles actually. So in summary, you know, primary cultures, uh, brain cartical neurons and factors and so did not take up the polyphenol nanoparticles. We got a conclusion that neurons is not responsible for this particular nanoparticles. And then uh, we, we we you know we, we got a doubt actually because um, you know as I mentioned, neurons are also uh, expressing the glucose transporters actually. So with our nanoparticles, like a glucose nanoparticle, it should it should target the neurons. Actually. But if neurons did not take up the nanoparticles, then what we did, we isolated the, the microglia, which is like a macrophages, which is present in, in, the, in the CNS regions, like a brine. 
and also the olfactory regions. Um, uh, so, so we purified this microglia and then we exposed this nanoparticles into the microglia, which is like a CNS macrophages. As you can see, um, this, uh, the microglia accumulated huge amount of nanoparticles in, in both cases, um, the, the particle and olfactory cases, it accumulated huge amount of nanoparticles. So uh, then further we investigated with, uh, with this um, um, and also the INS expressing this a nitric oxygen synthase, which is like a you know, stress um, uh, marker, stress based marker. This particular, this, this, the cell um, accumulated nanoparticle, which also producing the kind of stress actually. Then further we, uh, we um, uh, like analyzed using a purified, like a um, uh, purified microglia, which, uh, which we isolated from the transgenic mouse. Um, um, and as you can see in this case, um, we label the nanoparticles like this glucose nanoparticles uh, with, with, the, with the red C, like this is like a red color label, and it specifically uh, label this uh, microglia. So in all cases, microglia uh, taken up the huge amount of nanoparticles, but in the neuron cases did not take up the nanoparticles. And also, what we did, we also exposed um, uh, this uh, hydro, like galactam and nanoparticles into, into the um, into the cells actually from the olfactory tissue that, uh, cells. What happens so after a few hours, we got like a lipid drop accumulating microglia. It's like a kind of uh, dots kind of thing as you can see here actually. So uh, before performing the experiments, uh, even I don't know about this particular mechanisms and why it's, uh, it's dot kind of things. Um, so when we an started analyzing, we found this is, uh, when we started analyzing using our well, ultrastructural analysis, we found this uh, is a lipid droplets, lipid droplets. Lipid droplets, the lipid mechanism is is a, is a very common for the cancer cells um, and also adipose tissue uh, type cells actually. But it's not common for the any any olfactory glass cells. But uh, we found, you know, it's like lipid droplets actually, even at the glass cells actually. This this lipid droplets is uh, is, a, is a main indicator of um, uh, stress and also high level when the, the lipid droplets forms because of high levels uh, rose reactive oxygen species and the secretory uh, I mean, secrete pro inflammatory cytokines, then only the, the lipid droplets forms actually. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the ultrastructural uh, um, analysis, it shows um, uh, some kind of um, lipid droplets actually. This is a structure, the white uh, dots is like a structure of the lipid droplets actually. This happens after introducing this um, our, our nanoparticles. And also, uh, we, we, we after this uh, this uh, uh, olfactory tissues, we also analyzed uh, the same galactam and we exposed the same galactam and nanoparticles into into the, into the self assembled mini brains. As you can see, this particular cell types um, because in this mini brain contains five different cell types: um, neurons, microglia, and endothelial cells, astrocytes, and etc. etc. And as you can see in the picture, you know particular cell types it taken up this uh, the particles. It's not all, all other cell types actually. So, um, and then we found uh, the other, uh, I, I'm not presenting that, that uh, mechanistic things actually. Um, so then we found this, this primary immune cells microglia is fueled by glycolytic pathway actually, not only neurons, even the microglia also um, is, is expressing uh, many, uh, like a glucose metabolism, glucose pathway. And this glucose transport one is highly expressed in particularly the microglia. So as, as I mentioned in our previous experience, um, uh, the, the tumor is which expressing the glucose transport to one, our particles is gone and accumulates actually. The same way, uh, the microglia cells accumulate um, expressing the glucose transport to one actually. The same way our particles accumulate in huge way on, on, on particular particular cells like of microglia. As you can see, the further investigation also shows that particularly it bounds with the one particular cell, cell type, which is called as microglia. And also we, uh, um, uh, we, we performed, uh, you know, like in order to analyze whether uh, in, in a very deep way, we also performed with some, some like a, like a, a video and as you can see in particularly uh, this, um, this, our nanoparticles, um, the galactam and nanoparticles is found uh, particularly on the specific cell types actually. And so we, we concluded that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's because of you know the, the glucose transport one is involved in, um, in the particular um, uh, uh, research and also it's the, the microglia is involved in this. Uh, in this um, um, as I mentioned, you know this mini brain contain all these cell types actually endothelial pericytes, astrocytes. 
none of the cells involved um, in this particular mechanism, but particularly neurons and microglia involved in, the, in our research actually. Um, also, I, I like to show this uh, the video actually because why how the microglia is acting um, because when you are introducing any, any particles, so even in in vivo environment, is happening. Uh, you know, when when you are introducing anything, so the microglia is always active actually, so like a never resting um, uh, microglia. I mentioned like a garbage man because it's, it, if any harmful materials enters the brain, if this microglia it gets activated and it it it, um, it achieve up this um, this. Um, uh, any harmful materials actually in the same way it also achieve up the nanoparticles actually as you can see you know how is is eating the the, the any debris actually so and, and in other case you can see is a never resting microglia because all the all the times is monitoring the the brine environment actually this is all like in vitro experiment but i'm, I'm the same way it's monitoring your um, uh, olfactory regions like a nose regions and also the brain region actually patients I mean the, the people were affected by neurological disease after after the COVID infections the rest of the people were not affected because of this um, um, the macrophages actually and and also also we further we analyzed uh, uh, with the ultrastructural uh, investigation uh, you know this is exercise but when when any harmful materials goes inside the brain what happens is the microglia uh, Particularly, the astrocytes gets activated, but microglia is the main main activator action in this case. And microglia always is protecting uh, neurons at that the specialized area of neurons. As you can see in the ultrasexual um, experiments, um, the microglia this this is a characteristic, characteristic nature of microglia. As you can see, the lipid droplets you can see, and it always uh, it protects the neurons. Actually, any 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 materials go and attack the neurons, the microglia comes and targets. Um, uh, comes and eat up the the neurons actually. I mean, eat up the any any materials actually. This is this is a mechanism behind this. And um, uh, so far, I you know we 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 proved that um, um, the the uh, glucose transport is one is involved in particular in microglia cells and glucose transport mechanism. I mean, metabolism is much more necessary in cancer aspects and also in in um, in, uh, in the neurological aspects. And, and our findings reveal that uh, neither olfactory nor forebrain neurons internalize um, um, galactamine nanoparticles. Conversely, uh, olfactory and cortical microglia phagocytes the galactamine nanoparticles independently of their futures because of uh, the transport is involved in this. And the inherent mechanism, what we found, it's in, in the olfactory regions. Um, a mild injury, uh, what happens, mild injury or any any small harmful material enters, the astrocytes become phagocytes and remove fiery materials and produce anti cytokine. But in case of excess injury, for example, in case of uh, COVID um, infections or any viral infections, what happens, the reactive astrocytes, which is present in the brine, it produces pro inflammatory cytokines and it, it activates the microglia in a CNS resident macrophages actually. These are the these are the mechanisms not only for the nanoparticles or anything, even for this um, the novel um, coronavirus. So uh, I, I think I, I, I'm I'm finishing my presentation. So I like to thank um, um, all my my lab people from Technion Israel Institute of Technology, which is called as Mediterranean MIT. Now also I like to thank uh, Teva Pharmaceuticals for funding our um, particularly the nose to brain transport. Also, I'd like to thank the European Commission. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the hospitals uh, from the Barcelona because they provided the patient-derived cancer cells, uh, having sarcoma and rabbit sarcoma, and also my European, all my European partners. Stay safe and um, thank you all for your kind attention and thank you so much for the kind, uh, like, very good opportunity. And I thank uh, once again I thank the, the, the College of Pharmacy. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you, sir, for yeah. giving a, thank you, sir, for giving a detailed insight on the role of nature derived sugar based nanoparticles such as galactomannan in the field of cancer and neurological disorders. Thank you so much, sir. Now learn from yesterday, live for today and hope for tomorrow. But the important thing is not to stop questioning. This is a famous quote by Albert Einstein. Now, may I request Mr. Jajra Gopi Sudhir Kumar, sir, to present the questions raised by audience to Dr. Murli Kumara Swami, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I feel privileged 
to take this opportunity for a question and answer session in the present international webinar to nature inspired sugar based multifunctional drug delivery carriers for this the go, uh, the host dr uh, murli kumar swami thank you very much sir for your uh, enlightened no speak so your uh, insightful knowledge you talk explored and enlightened all the participants in use of sugar based polymers as a multifunctional drug delivery carriers in the present webinar sir so during the webinar we have some uh, few clarification from you sir from the the first one is a uh, sir uh, the first one is is it glycopolymers preferentially target various cell types and tissues to receptor interaction sir yeah you mean uh, it's not only specific actually okay if you want to target like you know our body is full of uh, mostly in many many parts actually it's, it's full of glucose transporters actually so it's not one it's not only the way actually because this is a one of the way to to target uh, without any any other uh, surface functionalization like you know antibodies and all because you know sometimes surface functionalization is not stable actually inside the body so instead of functionalization you can you can target with with the glucose receptors um, uh, using a glucose based uh, the, the polymers so, yeah thank you sir so one more question sir yeah so is it required any desired condition for saccharide modified polymers to mediate drug release sir uh actually it's not like you do not need like a spe specialized condition actually for example as i mentioned you know tumors or for example if you're targeting tumors actually tumors you know always say uh, producing a kind of environment actually when when you're targeting uh your your, your particles go and bind with the tumors and uh, immediately it starts uh like releasing the drug actually because the tumor environment you know it's like a multi environment like you know lack of oxygen sometimes and also there is an acidic environment so it automatically starts releasing a, your, your 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 drug molecules actually but only so, only one thing is what what you need to focus like a sustained release actually that that's our main focus so it should be you know it's not like a immediate release it should be like sustained release um, that's what we need to we need to modify according accordingly the surface fluctuations yeah thank you sir thank you sir uh, thank you very much sir sir is there any disadvantages to use the glucose receptor sir disadvantages uh, okay i presented the advantages actually uh, it's not disadvantages actually um, but you know uh, sometimes you will not get like a more specificity actually because you need to focus on more, more specific for example you know as i mentioned uh, i i i i presented only very few transporters actually because that's a big area as mentioned and i don't want to confuse all the audiences uh, uh, the main disadvantage advantage like you know it's not like sometimes it's not focus actually because you know there is a different sub categories like 1 2 3 4 5 so you need to focus on particularly like you know depends on the cell type specific or uh, like organ type specific actually so That, that's the only advantage actually like non specificity otherwise it's it's fine to use uh, glucose based and lot of lot of people they are utilizing um, uh, polysaccharide based uh, uh, approaches for for you know for the for the cancer and also blood brain barrier aspect like you know to treat neurological disorders so so thank you sir thank you very much sir your presentation has enlightened all the participants with the video presentation and live uh, in the experimental uh, results sir thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you once again i thank uh, professor principal sir dr gopal sir and also uh, dr salu kumar ma'am dr anapurna ma'am and also other faculty senior faculty um, thank you so much for this wonderful uh, opportunity thank you thank sir you. Uh, i request the speaker sir to yep. stop to stop sharing the screen so that we can enable us to put the blocks for the next webinar i think i i stopped already i i start um, yes sir thank you sir now I request Dr. E. Sello Kumari, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacognosy, to present the report on today's webinar series. 
Good afternoon, one and all. I would like to present the webinar series to report on the topic Nature Inspired Sugar Based Multifunctional Drug Carrier by an eminent speaker, Dr. Murali Kumarasamy, Senior Researcher, Technion Israel Institute of Technology, Israel. The total number of registered participants are 400 across three countries globally that include India, Nigeria, and Pakistan. And in India, the participants are from 15 states and two union territories among 44 colleges. The details of the participants are students 74.6%, professors 3%, associate professors 4.8%, assistant professors 11.6%, and research scholars 2.5%. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. Now we are coming to the end of the session. I request Dr. G. Prakash Yogananda, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmacognosy, to deliver the vote of thanks. A yeah, warm good afternoon to one and all. I am very happy to be here and part of this global pharma e-learning webcast series organized by College of Pharmacy, Mother Teresa Postgraduate and Research Institute of Health Sciences, a government of Puducherry institution, Puducherry. I am honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give a vote of thanks of this special day. First of all, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our respected Dean Madam, Dr. S. Jayanti, for her constant support and encouragement in organizing this webinar. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for Dr. Murali Kumaraswamy, Senior Researcher, Technion Israel Institute of Technology, Haifa Israel, for his enlightened talk on nature-inspired sugar-based multifunctional drug delivery carrier in the international web webinar series two. So really your speech was inspirable to the young minds pharma buddies and research scientists. In spite of your busy schedule, you have accepted our invitation and completed this great task, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I take Nature Inspired Sugar Based Multifunctional Drug Delivery Carrier in the International Research Sir, really, your speech was inspirable to the end mind, pharma buddies, and research scientists. In spite of your busy schedule, you have accepted our invitation and completed this great task. Thank you very much, sir. I take this ple I take pleasure and enthusiasm to thank our principal. Registrar Academic, HOD, Department of Pharmacognosy, Professor Dr. V. Gopal, sir, a man of inspiration, kind-hearted. Actually, this is echoing. Pleasure. Uh, sir. Sir, sir. Yeah, yeah, half minute, sir. Sorry for the interruption. I take pleasure and enthusiasm to thank our principal, Registrar Academic, HOD Department of Pharmacognosy, Professor Dr. V. Gopal, sir, a man of inspiration, kind hearted, great academician, good orator, workaholic, pillar, and supporter, not only for this webinar series throughout the entire endeavor of College of Pharmacy. Thank you very much, sir. I thank all the HODs, professors, associate professors, assistant professors, demonstrator and lab technicians for their support and blessings. I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for the technical team organizing this webinar series. Lord, last but not least, I'm also grateful to the international and national registered delegates and participants, active listeners, thought-provoking persons, students, without whom the great success of webinar won't be possible. Once again, thank you one and all, and I wish you all have a safe, stay, stay at home and continue to learn through this kind of e-learning process. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. A gentle reminder to all the participants, the e-certificates will be provided to all the registered participants 
after submission of their feedback form. The link for submission of feedback is attached in the YouTube chat box. Join us for our next webinar on July 17 at 2.30 p.m. on the topic Nanotechnology in Drug Delivery by Dr. Ashok Kumar, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, UCSI University, Malaysia. And the link for registration is also to the next webinar is also given in the YouTube chat box and also the screen. Thank you all and have a very nice day.